Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Nadine and this is Legally Diverse, a platform I set up to help aspiring solicitors reach their goal as quickly as possible whilst keeping you motivated throughout the process. So today I'm going to be talking about written exercises. So I've had about six different written exercises at assessment centres and they've kind of ranged. So I've had some written exercises where it's all about drafting. So I'm drafting an email or I'm drafting a letter. I've also had written exercises that involve just proofreading. So you're looking for a couple of things, which I'm going to cover. And then I've had written exercises that accompany case studies. So case studies is essentially when you're given information or a text. So for example, you may be given an M&A deal, merging acquisitions. And your answer, for example, identify what legal issues a client may have, what you might want to advise a client on, etc. And then you draft um, a written piece of work that will go to a partner or your supervisor. So there are three different types of written exercises. I'm going to cover the first two. So I'm going to cover drafting generally and also um, proofreading written exercises. I'm not going to cover case studies only because that requires its own video. Like it's a whole video in itself. So I'm not going to cover that in that video. But if you do have a written exercise coming up, stay tuned and we'll get straight into the video. From my experience... When law firms include written exercises as part of the assessment centre, they're generally looking at a few main things. One being your written communication skills. How do you communicate the information that you want to provide? Secondly, how do you structure your writing? Is it clear? Is it concise? Is it easy to follow? Thirdly, your attention to detail. So both in the work that you produce and the work that you review. And finally, your time management skills. Because like most assessments at the assessment center, it is a timed exercise. So they wanna see how you manage your time so that you complete the task set. So with that being said, tip number one, check the format of the written exercise you've been given. So for example, if you're drafting a letter, make sure you include all of the necessary components of a letter. So for example, make sure you put the date in the right place. Make sure you put the recipient's address in the right place and your address in the right place. Make sure it's addressed correctly and it ends correctly. So as we all know, the whole yours sincerely versus yours faithfully. Make sure you understand the difference because when you're drafting a letter, the way in which you format that letter is important. And I've had a written exercise assessment centre where they've literally told me that I didn't format the letter in the correct way. So make sure if you know that you're drafting a letter or if you don't know that you're drafting a letter, check anyways how a letter should be structured so that you can make sure it is formatted correctly in your assessment. Similarly, if you are drafting an email, make sure that you include the correct format. So make sure you add in a subject heading of the email, make sure you address it correctly. So dear such and such, and make sure you end it correctly. So kind regards is often common practice. Understanding the different type of formats and making sure you are comfortable with how those formats are to be laid out before you enter the assessment is important. So if you're not sure, check before the day. Tip number two, make sure you plan the response you want to give in your written exercise. And what I mean by that is before you start writing or before you start typing, whatever way it is, make sure that you plan out everything that you want to include the same way you would plan an essay before you start writing. Don't start writing and then think afterwards, actually, what was I trying to say here? Because then your writing may look a bit more haphazard. So plan what you want to say before you start. Tip number three, structure. So I kind of touched on this earlier, and that is the fact that with written exercises, graduate recruitments tend to like there to be a clear structure in the way that you have set out your written information. So they love paragraphs, they love headings, because it breaks up the written information as opposed to you having one massively long, page-long paragraph 
We don't want that. When you're planning, you're including the structure that you want, and then you implement that clear structure in your written response. Structure is important. You want your information to flow. So you may structure it in terms of different issues that you identify. You may structure it in terms of different departments. Whatever structure you decide to use is fine because that will obviously be dependent on the context and the content that you are given to write about. But as long as you have structure, that is the main thing. Tip number four, make sure you leave enough time at the end of the exercise to check through your work. The same way you're told to check at the end of exams is the exact same way you should check at the end of your written exercise. Leave five or 10 minutes at the end to check through everything that you've written down. So you can check your spelling. You can check your grammar. You can check that you've formatted properly. You can check that you've included any of the necessary facts and figures that they've given you. Tip number five. Now, this kind of follows on from my last point. In order to be able to even set aside five minutes at the end, you need to make sure that you time manage the task. So for example, if you have 40 minutes to do a task in, make sure you divide that time up during the planning stage so that you are hitting everything you need to hit in the time that you're given. I've also had a written exercise where I didn't finish in time. I definitely spent way too long on one section, which meant I didn't have enough time to finish the other paragraphs I wanted to write. Whilst you don't want to rush any part of it, if you allocate time effectively, you're more likely to get it done. Now, those were my five tips for a drafting written exercise format. What I'm going to talk about a little bit now is my tips for written exercises that involve proofreading. So like I mentioned, another skill that they're looking for in this whole written exercise is your attention to detail. So improve reading written exercises. You will often be given a piece of information and you'll be asked to identify any spelling or grammar issues. And in this task, you will literally need to go word for word and line for line to make sure that everything is spelled correctly and that the correct words are used. You want to make sure that the grammar is correct. You want to make sure the commas are in the right place, that the full stop is in the right place. The capital letters are in the right place. Like it's literally an intention to detail task. They really want to make sure that if you're drafting a document, you're not making these mistakes. Or similarly, if you're proofreading a document for someone else, you're identifying these mistakes. So that is what these tasks are there there for. So what I would say is if you know that, for example, your spelling or grammar is a little bit shaky from those GCSEs and A-level days, honestly, don't do yourself a disservice by not just quickly going through some things. For example, I remember in one of my written exercises that there was a lot of grammar and content issues. For example, they would add affect instead of effect, or they would add the wrong there, or they would add the wrong practice. So practice with a C instead of practice with an S. Those type of things you need to know because that's how they catch you out. So if you have any doubt about your grammar, spelling, attention to detail, precision, make sure you do some practice before the day of the assessment. In addition to a general piece of text, you may get a legal document. So in one of my assessment centres, I had a, a legal contract. And in that legal contract, there was a lot of things that you had to pick out. So it may be the spelling of a client's name. So you may be given one document with it being spelled one way and then the legal contract spells it a different way and you would need to identify that actually something's wrong here. So it was about going back and forth between the documents and making sure there was no errors. But similarly, there was parts of the legal document that were clear red flags, but I didn't identify it because I was trying to outsmart the task. And I'll explain what I mean by that. At the time of this assessment centre, I was doing the LPC. And as part of the LPC, I was told that a client can have a contract under one jurisdiction and elect for it to be tried in a different jurisdiction. Like they can put in the contract that if any issues come up, it will be sought in a different jurisdiction. So for example, it could be an English contract and they can elect to have any issues tried in Scotland. 
So in this task, the contract was English and they had said Scotland, for example, I really can't remember the country, guys, but I didn't flag it because I remember that parties can decide to do that. Because I didn't identify that it was a potential issue, the recruiters obviously assumed that I didn't notice the discrepancy there. So they didn't know why I hadn't flagged it, even though I had not flagged it because I thought I was trying to be smart. So if you think something could be an issue, flag it. So yeah, guys, those were my tips for drafting and proofreading written exercises. I hope those tips have been helpful. If they have, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help my videos reach a wider audience and so hopefully can therefore benefit more people. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe um, and share with your friends and anyone else that you think will really find this content useful. Comment in the section below what tips you found most helpful or any other tips that you're happy to share with other aspiring solicitors who may have written exercises coming up. Other than that, thanks for watching again, guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.